Hi everyone! On Thursday 20 March I created a poll in LinkedIn asking you if you were interested in getting insights and suggestions about my experience in passing the exam PL400 for Microsoft Power Platform Developer Associate. And the result, as you can imagine, pushed me to do this, this video. So here I am now with my tips and suggestions how you can get prepared for this exam. I have also common suggestions that fit with all Microsoft certification exams. All right, stick around and I'll show you how you can get prepared for the exam. Let's go. Here I am in my mailbox. In my case, it was a renewal process of a certification. So because specific certification have a deadline where you have to renew the certification. And in my case, it was this one, Power Platform Developer Associate. So the deadline and the expiration days date was quite near. So Microsoft sent me this email reminding me to start the renewal process with this link down below. So here, as you can see, you have a bullet list that makes a recap of um, information like in certification renewal is free. You are going to get a, renew a renewal assessments, which is shorter than the real exam starting from scratch when you need to get a new certification. For this specific exam, I got 24 questions. And after that, you are going to be dropped in the result page. Now, let's say that I click on this page and where I'm going to land is this, uh, exactly this, this page. Here there is our cap with important information. And here, very important, here is where you should measure your skills to get prepared. This is a, just a bullet list. And again, below here, you can start to take the renewal assessment. You can see the duration of this assessment. And then again, uh, below there is a collection of links to the documentation and models that you should go through at least to, to stay around uh, 60, 70 percent. Uh, of course, it depends also if you have experience with this topic. If you work daily with Power Platform, it would be more easy to take this, uh, this exam. And this is applied, of course, to every certificate, Microsoft certification. If you work uh, daily with Dynamics or Azure, uh, the Entra portal, it would be more familiar, the, the exam and the questions. Now, going to this specific exam here, you can see all models that you have to go through to to be prepared at least now let's say that you you go through all models but um i have a bad news for you this is really not enough especially if you don't work with this uh, thing daily or with uh, a nice frequency let's say so opening a, a specific model, I want to open this. Now, let's say potentially, but just potentially, you can get a question around webhook. And here you have the, the information, but the question may be more specific around the limit that could be exceeded in the message when the, book, the webhook is sent. What happens if the message exceeds the limit? So as you can see, this information unfortunately is not here. And this is a lock. And in order to fill this gap, all you need to do, of course, is just read also the documentation. You need to increment and incre increase the information. So let's say that uh, I'm searching now in the browser. You can use whatever search engine you want. I just searched here for uh, Power Platform Webhook, and th this is the, the first one valid that's dropped me to the learnmicrosoft.com site. So opening now this site, here I have all information around webhooks in Dataverse. And now if I scroll a bit down, I can see these boxes. So 
an important tip and suggestion is to go through all these boxes in the documentation because these are very important. Here is where the, the question could be originated. And let me now, following up on the question around the exceed of the limit of the message of the webhook, you can maybe find the answer directly in a specific box. There we go, this one. When the size of the entire HTTP payload exceed this limit, then the this parameter header will be included and the following remote execution context properties will be removed. So you are not going to get in the webhook parent context, input parameters, pre-entity images, post-entity images. So then that's the that's the, the answer. So what are, for example, the missing parameter if you get a webhook that exceeds the limit? And then you have to select parent context, input parameters and entity images. There we go. This is just one question that you can potentially get. But just potentially, let's say. We are just hypothetically speaking. And again, here you have also note I know this is more uh, work for you, but if you want to increase the probability to pass this exam, this is all you all you need to do. So just open the model and then you have here the, the topics, uh, the service bus, for example, then you maybe uh, search uh, Dataverse and Azure service bus and then go through also the boxes and in, try to get more insights around this topic and i'm i trust me you are going to to pass the axiom so this is pretty enough especially if you are going to face a renewal um, cycle but of course if you start from scratch go through all documentation and try also to uh, some test assessment that you can find another important tip to follow and a recommendation that I give you is the sandbox. So follow every exercise that you can find in this, in this, uh, in every model. So in this case, it tells you sign in into Power Automate, create a new Power, uh, Power Automate flow, and then uh, create a manually trigger flow, and then add a number. So follow all these steps that you can find, all the, uh, this function, and try to memorize, if you can, all this thing, because you can maybe see also this kind of function expression around uh, the, the question. And yeah, very important. Follow every step and until the end, and try to memorize all steps that you do so you you are going to better stay prepared on every question that you can potentially get for example even on the user interface when you click an option on a drop down for example what are the uh, items on on this specific configuration that you can do with a service bus or whatever and then finally, the last one is that you can even uh, go through a video. I don't remember now what was the, the specific model, but there was a couple of models with videos um, inside. And go through the entire video and try to also to memorize all steps that the teacher or the, the user follow and try to to teach you because this could be also a potential question that you can get. All right, you are now ready for your next Microsoft certification exam. If you found this video helpful, please consider to subscribe and like. Let me know in the comment down below what is your next challenge and exam. I hope to see you next time. Bye.